Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 267. There's a couple of things we're going to do in this show today. One is we're going to give you a status of what's kind of going on in general. And then once we've done that, we're going to do a reply to a couple of questions I've gotten on using your new radio. And when I talk about radio, I mean your amateur radio transceiver. And this, uh, this is mainly for people who have just gotten their radios or planning on getting in to amateur radio. And uh, if you've, uh, you know, been in amateur radio, already have your license, or you're not interested in getting into amateur radio, um, you can stop the video at that point because it may not be as much interest to you. Anyway, here we go. Okay, some status. Uh, number one is we have, uh, as of this morning, 1,629 subscribers. And I really want to say thanks for everybody that subscribes. It gives me some indication that I'm doing videos that people are interested in. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. The other thing is uh, I want to uh, also thank uh, everyone that's been using my Amazon store. Um, my Amazon store is just a web page that is set up. Basically, there's a setup feature in Amazon that you can set up the store. So it's very easy to do. And once someone clicks on an item that's in your particular store, it takes you, takes them to the regular Amazon and you're doing everything like you would have gone directly to Amazon, except that if you purchase something, um, I'll get a small commission in the form of a credit. And then I take that credit and I buy equipment to review on my shows. So that's kind of how it works. There's no extra cost if you go, go through my Amazon store. And like I say, once you have clicked on an item, you go to Amazon, you're just dealing with Amazon like you normally would. Um, and you don't have to just buy things that are in my store. Once you go through my store and get to Amazon, if you buy some bird seed, I get credit for it just because you got to Amazon through my store. So that's how the store works. The next thing um, is giveaways, the status of the giveaways. We've had uh, several giveaways. We're going to do a lot more. Um, upcoming giveaways is at the 300th show or uh, thereabouts. I'll be giving away that Beacon strobe light. And then at the 2,000 subscribers, which are coming up on that, I'll be giving away a Grundig G3 radio. Now, this is a, basically a brand new radio. It's a radio that I purchased um, through a credit that was given to me by one of my subscribers. I did a review, and now I'm going to give it away. So that's kind of how that store thing, subscriber thing works. And then I'll, from time to time, I've been buying these uh, little inexpensive uh, but useful digital multimeters. Um, that, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's a catch-all thing that gives you a quick and dirty multimeter. It's not the most accurate in the world. But um, if you've got an expensive multimeter or you have no multimeter, meter, it's something great to have. So that's kind of the status of what's going on. Now, what's the show going to be about today? Well, today I've gotten um, several inquiries about that. Yes. Mm, how am I going to say that? Let me try that again. I've gotten several questions regarding how to use your new amateur radio and do your first contact. That's what I'm trying to say. So I've kind of put together a slideshow that, that may be of some help. Of, and it's very basic how you make that first contact. You know you... Let's go to my Amazon store. You bought one of these Bofang radios, and you've gotten your amateur license. Now you want to know, what's the process of talking to somebody the first time? My first contact. 
So that's going to try to tell you about today. Yeah, I can say if you're not in rushing, this is a good point point to stop the video and go on to something more exciting so anyway here we go we're going to go over to my powerpoint presentation there it is and we're going to go to the first page okay ham radio first contact that's what i'm going to talk about today so first we have to make some assumptions number one you have your license so you've you passed your test you have your license so you are now um, certified and you can legally transmit on that Bofang radio you bought. And uh, also assuming that you bought a handheld or have a handheld radio such as the Bofang radio. And you have, this is this presentation is assuming that you have access to a local repeater. So you're going to make your first contact through a local repeater. Now you could also make it through a direct contact with a person and that's called working simplex, meaning you're both on the same frequency, you're not going through a repeater. And basically a repeater, for in case you don't know what a repeater is, a repeater is somebody has set up a station that's on the air all the time normally and you can transmit to that station it has a bigger amplifier, a, a big tower maybe, or antenna that's way up in the air. So its coverage is much wider than your HT, which your HT is maybe three or four miles coverage. But going through a repeater, it might be as much as 100 miles. So that's what a repeater is. It repeats your signal. Other people can hear it further away from you than just hearing you directly. And then they can transmit back to that repeater and you can hear them. So that's how a repeater works in a nutshell. Now, the other last assumption that I can think of is you programmed your radio for those repeaters. You got to set up the, the transmit frequency, the receive frequency, um, what's called an offset, and what's called maybe that the repeater requires is a PL tone. And that's a whole different subject is about communicating repeaters. And I could spend a half hour on that. And that's the trouble with this subject is you could spend a lot of time on it. So I'm trying to make it brief. And uh, possibly if I get questions from this show, then I could do other shows. Anyway, the other thing you want to do, if possible, is if you have a local ham club, that's where you can get help and information. And the first thing you want to find out is, do they have a website and information about making contacts? Uh, excuse me, about contacting them. So do they have information about contacting them and finding out when the club meets and all this stuff? Uh, the other thing is, do they have a chat or message area that you can contact other hams in the area and get information from them. Also, does it tell you when they meet? If they do, attend the meetings. And this is where you, you can get some information about other hams. Because typically, other hams want to help new hams. And the process of, of having old hams help new hams is called Elmering. And so a person will be an Elmer, which is happened to be my father's name, and that person will be what's called now your mentor to get you into amateur radio. So let's go on. Hope I haven't lost you so far. Now, after you've set up your radio, the key thing to do is listen. Listen, listen, listen. Well, who's on the air, what they're talking about, what kind of people are, write down notes, you know, make yourself a notebook either a real notebook, uh, a loose leaf binder, or on the computer so that you can take notes. You can write down people's call signs, their names, you know, maybe something interesting about them, their hobbies and stuff like that. So you have something that once you try to contact this person, you can talk to them about. And as I said, uh, take notes. And there, there may be a scheduled net on these repeaters. Now, what I mean by nets, 
A net is a set time, say it's uh, Wednesday at 7.30, that the people that are on this particular repeater will get together and exchange information. You know, it's kind of like a little meeting on the air. And maybe they just call in and give their call signs and status. I've, uh, I've heard a net where there's a net on HF. I'm talking about VHF here. But on HF, there's a net that um, people call in first thing in the morning and give their weather status. So that's what I mean by a net. Next thing to do is scan the bands for non-repeater communications. Because, you, like I say, you could make a contact that's just between you and another person. It's a direct contact. You're not going through a repeater. So also scan the bands for non-repeater communications. Now, typically the band you will get on initially with your Bofang uh, HT is 2 meters. That's the band you'll get on. And that's the most active band for new amateurs and old for that matter. So, as I said before, get to know who's on and when. Keep listening. Now, move on. Okay, your first call. This is, you know, you've done all your homework. You've got your license. You've got your radio set up. You've been listening. It's your first call. So first thing you do is check to see if the band is not in use. You don't want to transmit over the top of somebody else. You don't want to break in the middle of a, con of a conversation. Um, but if there's a conversation going on, you can wait for kind of a pause between the, the two parties or multiple parties and make your call. Okay, be sure to check your radio settings. So you've got the right frequency, you've got the right power, you know, if the, if the transmitter is kind of far away, I mean the repeater is kind of far away, you want to make sure that you can completely get to it and get a good signal to it so that you're not dropping out, your signal's not dropping out. Then, when you've done that, you push the PTT, press to talk button, or transmit button, and say something like, XXYY, which is your call sign, uh, like in my case, KE4GSK, listening. So that way people know you're out there and you're listening. So you try that. Just push the press the talk, say, I'm listening, and wait. You listen for about, oh, 30 seconds, maybe a minute to see if anyone responds. And remember, you got to allow time for the repeater to cycle because some uh, the repeater has to receive your signal and transmit it back out. So there's a could be a little delay there. So you want it to have that time to delay before you transmit again. Now, going on. If you get no response, try again. This time saying something like um, KE4, GSK monitoring and listening for a call. So you're telling people... You're going you're gonna to stay on the channel for a while, and you're going to listen for anyone to call you back. So the key is don't get discouraged if no one gets, you don't get a response. Activity on the repeaters is sometimes spotty, especially if you're a new person and people don't know you. So, you know, I'm, what, my point is don't get discouraged. Verify you are hitting the repeater. You know, did your signal actually get to the repeater, repeated back out? And typically what happens is a lot of repeaters that will have a, uh, a beep or something when you hit the repeater. Now, some people what they do is they just key the mic and see if it hits the repeater and see if they get a, a beep back. That's called kerchunking. And it's kind of frowned upon. So you really, when you press that push the talk button to transmit, you really want to say something. Like I said before, you know, say something. Okay. Other thing is maybe there's just nobody out there listening. Some of the repeaters over time, I've uh, noticed that they, they get kind of dead, you know, and there's only activity at certain times. Like sometimes... There's activity early in the morning when people are going to work. They'll get on their radios and do a little conversation or um, after supper or something like that. So try it at different times, different days of the week, whatever. Okay, now, 
when you get a response, somebody says, you know, okay, I hear you, come back, whatever. Um, you want to reply something like, thanks for the comeback, or thanks for, re, you know, getting back to me. This is, and give them your call sign, and then give them your first name. My name is Tom. So you want to say something like that. And then wait for the other person to respond. Once he responds and starts giving you information, be sure to write it down so that you can use this information later. It's very important that you keep notes. So like I said in the beginning, get yourself a notebook so you can keep notes. Because if you're 100 years old like me, you'll forget things. You'll forget people's call sign. And you'll forget their name. So record this information. And then give a little bit, not a lot, because remember, you're talking to probably somebody you don't know, a stranger. So give a little bit of information about yourself. But like I say, not too much. Don't give away your phone number and address, the first person you talk to or the first time you talk to someone. Okay, then just kind of proceed on with the conversation. Remember that by law, you require, which most people don't do this, but you're, you should have some, start off with some good habits. You're required to give your call sign about every 10 minutes or less. Not really strict, but, you know, and you just, you know, when you go to transmit to the person again, just say your call sign and then say what you normally would have said there and you met the, the, the law. Okay. One thing to remember is to give your contact and the repeater time to respond. There could be a delay there, like I said before. Plus, uh, you know, he may be sitting away from his um, microphone and he may, you know, may take him, because he's been listening to you, he may take him a few seconds to respond. So give him time to respond. The, you know, this is uh, basically um, a, a one-way conversation. You talk and then he talks and then you talk. So you you both can't talk at the same time like you do on the phone. Okay, just keep that in mind. Then at the end of the contact, you would finally say something like, uh, thanks for the contact, goodbye for now, and then give his call sign. And then th this is, and give your call sign, and say clear and monitoring. So you're clear with this conversation, but you'll be monitoring on the side for other contacts. Or if, you, if you're not planning on doing that, you know, you're, <laughs> your first contact and you're kind of exhausted, uh, then don't say the monitoring part. Now, what do you do if you're turned on your radio and you're listening and you hear somebody doing what you just did? They're calling for a contact. So to respond to a call... Uh, you might hear, you know, somebody give his call sign. You would respond with his call sign. And I just made up these call signs. They don't mean anything. You would respond with his call sign, and then this is your call sign. That's what you would say. And he could say, you know, good day. My name is Tom, and I'm located in Clearwater, Florida. Back to you. That just gets the conversation started. And then once you've done that and he's come back to you, then the communications proceeds as I described before. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, um, how you would make your first contact. And uh, trying to get back to there, trying to get back to, back to that page. So if you have any additional questions, like I say, I could spend an hour or more on this. And, uh, but I'm just trying to get you, you know, it's a feeling that it's, it's not going to be that difficult and it's pretty straightforward. And you, if you kind of follow my outline, your first contact will be straightforward and then you'll be making many more. So thanks for watching. That's the show for today. Bye-bye.